everyone. This will be take two because we had a technical issue. We couldn't find our November calendar the first time. So what we're going to do is we are going to um, start with our November calendars. We have with us today Warren Hart. He's our CTC astronomer. And um, just to give you a recap, he said that his night sky tour at the planetarium is this upcoming Saturday, correct? Uh, let's see. Let me look here on the 12th. Nope, not nope. this Saturday, the second following the 22nd. Okay. All right. So you guys make sure to get on over to the planetarium on the 22nd for his night sky tour. And we're going to go ahead and attempt this again with our November calendar. You ready? Very good. I'm ready. All right, let's go ahead and you can open it up a little more if you want. And let's look at that first partial week there. Okay. And there you go. Now, uh, have the the usual stuff, if you will. And on the first day of the month, I've been putting in for for you. Notice on November the 1st, there at the, uh, the third thing that's listed is to access the CTC library, astronomy libra library guide page. There is the link. And Cindy, if you want to show them the basic page of the uh, web guide, the there you go, and tell them what's there. Well, we have a countdown to the eclipse. You can find all your calendars. Um, you can find the shows over at the planetarium. We've got past night sky tours for Warren. And if you guys are into astronomy, we have books and databases. And Warren has some really cool fun activities. Also, he's been adding some really cool stuff about eclipses, the sun, and extreme stars. So a little bit of everything astronomy on that page. And that's on the library's website. And all of the things that we put on there, at least the, what, uh, what I submit for the LibGuide is PDF, so you are free to download, uh, print it out on, and copy it onto your uh, Word page or whatever you use, and you can print it out and have it in hand uh, when you're going to be uh, going out to look in the sky. Notice uh, that we have here, here starting in, on uh, Wednesday is uh, there is the first of the seven constellations for September or for pardon me for November, and uh, that's Hydrus, the male water snake. There is Hydra, which is the female, and that was a previous uh, month that we looked at it. And then there's a thing called the equation of time. And I will get a, uh, a, a chart, if you will, a drawing for what that looks like. And it's how in synchronous with the sun, the actual sun in the sky, how does that fit up with what you're looking at on your phone for the time or on the watch on the one of your wrists for the time of uh, coordinating which uh, the two together. Then notice on Saturday the 5th, in red, um, I encourage you, you before you go to bed that night, that go ahead and do your step back, your fall back uh, one hour uh, for the change so that unless on Sunday morning on the 6th, if you want to get up at 2 o'clock and make the change there, uh, then that's when we have, uh, unfortunately, our legislature will not uh, let us choose one and stay with it all year 
all the time and we don't have to change back and forth. But anyway, let's go down to that second week there, uh, well, Cindy. We've skipped looking at hydras. Oh, okay. Well, let's go ahead. I was just trying to save time. So let's look oh, at hydras. We can't, we can't skip our constellation. <laughs> there you go. There's hydras. Now, you notice at the top up there in the purple color is our our southern horizon. So we would be looking to the south and what that is indicating that everything uh, from that uh, dashed uh, purple line up to the top, up above so that the, you see the words of Horologium and Eridanus, those two other constellations, that is how much we can see of them. And then notice on Hydrus, the uh, male water snake, that everything from that purple line on down to the South Pole, you will not, we will not see those at all because they are, that is below our horizon. The only way you'd be able to see it is that you have to, in some way or other, you have to travel south to see more in the for the southern horizon there. And that's unfortunate because you do see there's there is also on the page, there are the two what are called the Magellanic Clouds, named after Magellan the Portuguese captain, navigator, sailor, world uh, around the world explorer. And he found and saw for the first time and recorded that in his logbook, these two, he, and he mentioned them, that they looked like clouds in the sky, a faint cloud. And that's why they're called the on the left, the LMC, and on the right, the SMC. And that just means the Large Magellanic Cloud and then the Small Magellanic Cloud. And actually, those are two separate galaxies that you can see every night of the year if you were down in the Southern Hemisphere. So that's just what, what all that is showing there. Okay, so let's go back to our calendar, and that was Hydrus, and then we're going to go down to the next week, and now we have, uh, you notice there on Tuesday the 8th, it's talking about what are we going to have? We're going to have a look down in the, on Tuesday the 8th, the third item down at 544 in the morning is a total lunar eclipse. And what that means is the moon has in its orbit has gone in, come into Earth's shadow. And that's where on that page up at the top there on the 8th at 204 a.m., is the first contact with uh, Earth's shadow, and it's not the dark part, and it's called the penumbral uh, shadow, and more than likely you would not even notice that anything is happening to the moon, and it's going. To, it doesn't just start, and there it is. The whole moon changes over. You will see it as we go on down. Notice that at 3.11 in the morning, then you get to the umbral shadow, and that's the darker part of the shadow, and that's more than likely when you would see off to one, uh, one side of the moon a little bit that a shadow begins to creep across the face of the moon because the moon is moving in its own orbit in relation to us, and it begins to get uh, darker as time goes on, until finally at 4.18 in the morning, then the total lunar eclipse begins. So the whole face of the moon is in the darkest part 
of our Earth of Earth's shadow. And then you see at 502 is when uh, we would have for the moon, it would be in what we would call its full moon location in the sky. Now, as time progresses, then you're going to see at 544 in the morning that it's the total lunar eclipse ends. And all that means is the dark part of the shadow, the umbral, has moved in, on the face of the moon so that you can see, oh, it's not covering the entire moon. And it goes on and eventually then uh, as we would have that and because of our location here in Texas at this time, then the moon is going to set on the western sky at 7.01 and that's the last of the total lunar, lunar eclipse you would be able to see. If there's, there's other parts in the world where you would be able to see the entire sequence, but for us at this time, we cannot see the entire sequence. So anyway, uh, there you can be, you can see that. And then we have our second constellation, and there is Aries the Ram. And so, Cindy, I notice you have it already up. Very good. <clears throat> notice on here, there is at the uh, at 31.1 degrees north, which is our latitude <clears throat> here at the planetarium, that, and I've indicated that with our purple line uh, there, that is what would go directly overhead for us. So whenever you're outside, and if you look straight up over you, which is the point we would call the zenith, then you're looking directly up at in the sky what is at 31.1 degrees north and difference is that this you notice here there is no southern horizon or northern horizon so that means you can see everything all of aries and each time that it's up go down a little bit and the next thing is the Tropic of Cancer, the northern part there and that's at uh, 23.44 uh, degrees north and what that is indicating that is how far north in the sky the sun uh, in its uh, as we orbit the sun uh, the sun seems to rise in the sky and eventually it re reaches there that latitude and which is called the Tropic of Cancer. Then just below it at an angle you see the ecliptic. That is the path of the sun throughout the year and uh, where it would be, and there's time, would be time dates on there if you uh, uh, would look at the ecliptic, and uh, where the sun would be at midnight. Of course, we can't see it, but that's in relation to what we know as how as it travels throughout the year. Then finally, down at the bottom there, at zero degrees, is our equator. And if you will check on that, you'll notice that I have decided because I had tried initially to have all of the different lines there the same color. But then that became so um, confusing for, as we're going to see here eventually, that I said, uh, that's a mistake on my part. So I've started going back, changing the colors that you can make out one from the other uh, that we have. Let's scroll down, Cindy, go on down to the last page. Keep going. Then what I also include down there in the uh, part of the page where it says interesting information, and there in color 
is a description of each of those things that I have on that page. We start with the planetarium's latitude and then the Tropic of Cancer, an explanation of that, the ecliptic, an explanation, and the equator, an explanation for those. So to help you as you see uh, on this. And for just as an, another little aside thing, if you want to view all of the constellation Aries, notice that you have to be at or between the two separate latitudes that I have indicated. And we have to be uh, between the North Pole and on down to way down to the south. You see that. So we're for Aries, we have no problem. We can see all of Aries the times when it's visible in the night sky. All right, thank you, Cindy. Let's go back to the calendar and we'll continue on. There's Aries. Now, on Wednesday the 9th, the planet Uranus, which is the farthest of our planets that you can see without binoculars or a telescope. Now, scroll up to the top of the first page there, if you would, Cindy, all the way up. Notice what I have underneath the date. Every astronomical event listed in this calendar can be seen by just looking up in the sky and binoculars or telescopes are not required. They will help, of course, but you do not need them. Just go out there with your eyeballs and take a look. And so what we have now, Uranus is the farthest of the visible uh, planets that uh, are in our solar system. There is one that's further, Neptune, but it's farther away, of course, and also it is uh, its brightness or what we call its magnitude is below the, the ability that we can see it with just our eyeballs. The only way you're going to find it and see it is you're going to have to use either binoculars or a telescope. And so that's why I didn't put uh, Neptune on there. Now, Uranus, however, is at what is called opposition. Picture in your mind, you're on Earth, you're at nighttime, you are looking out in the dark sky. In other words, you're looking out through our shadow of Earth. And <clears throat> uh, you're standing on Earth, in essence, behind you, on the other side of Earth, would be the sun. And you're looking out into the night sky, <clears throat> you're going to find Uranus there in the shadow of our night sky. And because Uranus is so far away, and so it is very large, but it's only going to look like another little bitty star. And the only way you would know that you are seeing Uranus is that you would need to find what constellation it's going to be in and know which stars are uh, there at all times in the constellation. And you're looking for a trespasser. And that would be planet Uran Uranus there. Uh, it is possible but you need to be completely away of any city lights. Uh, no moon is out also. Notice the day before on, Mon on Tuesday the 8th. What is it? We got a full moon. Well, I debated. Do I want to put Uranus out there? Yeah, I'll go ahead and say it. But I'll just clue you in. You ain't going to see it. Because the moon, the full moon is going to wash out the night sky uh, to a great effect. Now, on Thursday the 10th, we have our next uh, constellation, and that's Fornax, the furnace. And so Cindy already has that. Let's take a look. And you go up there. And notice the only thing we have 
on the uh, outline of the gray area, notice up there to the left and right near the top, it says minus 10 degrees, minus 10. You go down, it says minus 20, minus 30, minus 40. In other words, with a minus, we're looking in the southern hemisphere. We are looking in the part of the night, night, night sky that is down below, if we want to call that, below the equator. And notice we have with our uh, blue there, we have the Tropic of Capricorn. Now, if you remember earlier, we had on Aries, we had the Tropic of Cancer, and that is in for our northern hemisphere. Where is the sun at the highest time of the year there? At that highest point, that's when but that our spring ends and our summer begins. Now, the reverse <clears throat> here for Capricorn. As we go on into October, November, December, that there's eventually going to be in December, about the 21st, that the sun will seem to stop, or the term is the sun stands still. That's the idea of it uh, that we have there, and that it's the lowest it is for us in uh, plotting it in the sky, and so that is ages ago, centuries ago, that happened to be in the constellation of Capricornus. And so it's named then the Tropic of Capricorn. Now, uh, also, uh, we do not have on the Fornax nothing about the southern horizon. So you will be able to see all of Fornax anyway. And there is something there on the left in the white. There's the Hudaf and the Exodaf. Whatever. What in the world are those two things? So, Cindy, let's scroll down and let's look at our, third, our second page right there. Okay. Tropic of Capricorn, da 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 and then HUDF, the Hubble Ultra Deep Field. And there's a big paragraph about what we did with the Hubble telescope in the sky back in 2003 and to, into 2004. And that's called the Hubble Deep Field. And they came back with it, if you will, at a later date. And for some reason, I don't have the date down there. But uh, they took some extra uh, number of pictures, if you will. And notice on the second line of that over to the right, it says it's composed from exposures over 22 and a half days, and, which is 2 million seconds. And they kept taking picture after picture after picture and was able then to uh, find additional galaxies further away and up to 13.2 billion light years away. And Cindy already has up, and so let's go to that picture. Cindy, here is what the ultra deep field looks like, if you will. Go ahead and click I on that. I was trying to find them. I had them in different orders. Okay. That's okay. Here's the ultra deep field. And if you want to scroll just slightly down a little bit, and that's good, right in there. And what you are seeing are galaxies. All of those are galaxies. Now, also, uh, we don't see any stars on there in our own system. And the reason I'm saying that is because normally when we would be looking there, you would have like crosshairs uh, on the on that star there, but uh, all of these are galaxies and uh, in different shapes and all. Scroll back up to the top of the page for there, and we see how far away. 
It's approximately 13 billion light years away. And what I remind people is anytime you look in the night sky, you are always looking into history. Example, we never see where the sun is. We see where the sun was eight and almost a half, eight and a half minutes ago. We do not see where the planets are. We see where the planets were for a certain amount of time. It took the light reflected off of the surface of that planet to reach us here on Earth. We don't see where the stars are. We see where they were when the light uh, the radiated out from that specific star, that sun, and how long did it take to get here? And so you're always looking into history. I get a question every once in a while from someone will ask when we're looking at uh, an object a long ways away, usually uh, for one that comes to mind is the Andromeda galaxy, which is the one that you can see again without binoculars or a telescope, very faint, but you can see it, and it's 2.3 million light years away. And I'll get this question. Is it still there? Well, wouldn't know unless something has drastically happened to it. We won't know for another 2.3 million years to find out what change there was. So history is involved for you be able to see anything and how far away is it from us. Now, we have, uh, go on, Cindy, real quick. There's the extra deep field. Uh, that was our other one. And they did some more work and so very similar. And these pages are all, there you go, the extreme deep field. And it added about a 13.2 billion light years away. And there's you some more uh, in there. And so these are on the pages on the, the Astronomy Lib Guide that you can take a look at and see there. And like again, what I'm saying, that everything you see is a galaxy. And some of these, you can tell that they are larger and they have different shapes and everything. Well, because they are at least closer to us, we can see their shape. The further away they are from us, it's harder to sh see their shape. And some of those are just pure little pinpoints. Our technology has not allowed us yet to be able to pick up uh, separate stars on distant galaxies. Notice uh, up toward the top in the top center, if you see there's some very, very, very faint little pinpoints of light. Those are galaxies. But they're so far away, all we can de uh, see at all via the Hubble telescope, it's a pinpoint. So until technology improves, we that's all we're going to be able to see on here. All right. Thank you, Cindy. Let's go back. And we have Eridanus, the river we want to take a look at. And here we go. And let's see. The furnace. OK, we have that. I'm skipping ahead. Now, uh, let's go to the scroll back up just a little bit. Saturn is going to be a, what's called its East Quadrature. And I believe I have a picture or a drawing of what those positions are. If not, I'll make sure I'll get it in there for the lib guide. And it's this is the best night of the year to view the planet Saturn. Uh, there on Friday the 11th of November. 
and we'll be able to see it then. Okay, let's go down to our third week. And then the moon is at its apogee location. We've already had the perigee or earlier. And it, the apogee gives you a clue. It says that it is the eighth farthest of the 13 apogee or apogeal moons for this year. We have 13 times that uh, the orbiting of the moon around us, there are in 13 orbits that we can, pardon me, we can uh, see what's happening there with the moon. Now on Wednesday the 16th, you see their moon is continuing on the third quarter, but then look, what do we have on the 16th? And Cindy, you want to mention about this one? Yeah, this is the uh, December night sky tour, the virtual night sky tour that we're having here because we wanted to get it in before the Thanksgiving holidays. So okay. we'll be learning early about our December night sky tour. Sure. So, uh, October, November, December uh, makes things kind of shift around, and it's important for you to uh, to find it. Be sure you take a look at the calendar, and we'll have that up for you. Now, yeah, let me let me show real quick. If y'all are interested in where, what times, or you forget what times, then um, it's on our events page, and here's the dates of the night sky tour. Mm -hmm. Good. Very helpful. Okay. Okay. On Friday the 18th, we have our next constellation, Horologium, and it's the pendulum clock. And so we'll see this. And there's not a whole lot of stars for it. I mean, star, uh, yeah, for us to find. But we do have this. Now, notice on this one, Horologium, you see where the southern horizon is? It's down toward the bottom. So that means everything above that line we can see. But stars, if you will, listed there for horologium, stars 1, 5, and 6, you're not going to see them unless you go south to take a look but you can see a portion of horologium. Okay, let's go when, on. Go ahead. Let me ask, when they go to the um, planetarium, are they able to see all these stars that they can't see here with the naked yes. eye? Okay. Yes, we do because we, we can move and uh, where we want to call where our position is. We can change it anywhere. We can say at the planetarium, we're going to go to the South Pole. We can go to the South Pole and you get this, what the what it would look like if you were at the South Pole. We can go clear up to the North Pole and do the same thing uh, there. So we're not restricted. and We can show the entire constellation of Horologium and uh, there. Okay, good question. Thank you. Sure. Then, then if you notice there on uh, the Saturday the 19th, because of Thanksgiving, uh, I, my time for the planetarium presentation has been bumped up to Saturday the 19th instead of being the last Saturday of the month. Now, let's go to the 20th, and we have our next constellation. That's Perseus, or Andromeda's hero. And if you come to the planetarium as we get into November, December, I will tell the story, which includes Perseus. And it says the rescuer or the hero, hero of Andromeda. And I will include all of that in uh, the presentation. And uh, telling you the story, then you will get uh, the opportunity to be familiar with a certain portion of the sky that will give you a good eight, of probably, and maybe even more constellations to become uh, fully <clears throat> familiar with 
as you we go along, uh, especially into the winter time period. Now, notice on Perseus, we have a number of things. Uh, Perseus is far enough north <clears throat> that we have the northern horizon. Now, what's different here, because the northern horizon is uh, we are in the northern hemisphere. And all that is saying is that <clears throat> when we look in the sky, that there is what is below us, uh, what we can see, everything above that northern horizon, you can see every night of the year. And it's a great big circle uh, there uh, centered on the North Star Polaris that you can see every night of the year because it's above our northern horizon. Let's go on down. We have Perseus there uh, with him. And notice he Perseus is just right next to, look to the right of Perseus, and you see Andromeda, uh, the daughter, the princess of the mythical country of Ethiopia. And at the foot of Perseus, there is our latitude, the planetarium's latitude. So that latitude is directly overhead, and that gives you a perspective to see Perseus. You're going to have to either lay down and uh, look up in the sky or uh, uh, bend your neck to look up and see, uh, see there. Then we go down, and we have uh, just the the bare uh, part of the Tropic of Cancer, and then there is the, uh, the ecliptic that we have. So let's go back to the calendar and see if we can hurry up, and I'll get us through here. And on Wednesday the 23rd, the moon goes on. It's now in the new location, and it's just mentioning that to you because we can't see the new moon because it's in between us and the sun, and we're looking at the dark side, if you will, of the moon. So you can't see it. Then we have Thanksgiving. Then we have, on the 25th, the perigee moon when it's closest to us. Let's go on to the 27th. We have then the constellation of reticulum. And that is the telescope's reticle, if you will, or crosshairs that you would look in there. And we'll just say that uh, connecting all that, uh, maybe that's the, uh, the crosshairs uh, in the, the telescope. But uh, I'm just connecting the stars to help us. However, really doesn't matter because look where it is. It's below our southern horizon. So we're not going to be able to see it unless you go south. Sorry about, about that. Go back to the calendar. We're going to continue on. And the next one is an equatorial calendar. And that's called Eridanus. And it's the river. Now, we're going to see that. So let's go to Eridanus. And uh, in relation to it, right, it's good right there, Cindy. Very good. Notice uh, to the upper left of Eridanus, and there is the constellation of Orion. And at the top of Eridanus, and going across the middle part of Orion, is our equator. And notice how that long river going south, or starting from the south, your choice on that, and it's down, and it's just above our southern horizon. And that star down there, Achenar, is a very bright one because the only way we can distinguish uh, how bright or that its magnitude of a star is on a map like this, um, we, we, the only way we can do is make the black dot for the star uh, be larger. And you see over to the left, we have another one that's brighter because it's a bigger black dot. Anyway, so we have all, all of that. Let's go back to the calendar. 
and we're about to finish up and we have here on the 30th we have the moon as it's going on its first quarter uh, position its location in the sky then let me mention something here that happens predominantly through this time period each year notice it says at eight o'clock that night on that wednesday night that the planet mars is going to be nearest to us, us here on earth for this year now we get questions we get phone calls because there is still on the internet because whatever was on the internet stays on the internet someone sent out on the internet many years ago that on a certain night that the uh, planet Mars was going to be close the closest to us in uh, for centuries and all and it's going to look like that it would be as you when you look at Mars it's going to look as large as the moon well that scared a lot of people because if that really happened we have a problem a severe problem here because Mars has left its orbit and it's encroaching on us well the problem is the person who put that initial internet statement out forgot a part of the original statement it should have said and we would say the same thing here on eight o'clock that night on wednesday the 30th that the planet mars is going to be nearest to earth it's going to look larger in the sky than before and it will look uh, and if you have a telescope and you look at mars it can look maybe as large as the moon but you have to use the telescope for that to happen and that was what was left out and so we have uh, then uh, the old uh, Orson, uh, Orson Welles, uh, what was it there, um, the Mars, expl the, the, I'm trying to think of what it was. The where, radio? Yeah, the, the radio, radio show? broke. When the Martians came down? Yeah, and it was initially a, a radio st a story, or program and it was fictional and at the very beginning of it they mentioned that this was fiction don't get alarmed well as time went on during the show uh, people would tell their call up and tell their friends hey you need to see this this is pretty interesting and so people would go over and look at it and they oh my goodness they didn't get the first part that this is a fictional radio story and unfortunately some people unfortunately uh, took their lives mm -hmm. uh, because they thought that we were Mars had invaded uh, the creatures on Mars had invaded us and that was a, a sad result uh, there but that's not happening here. I just no. want you to be aware of that. No. No. Okay, so that's November. Then we'll be looking, of course, at December. And I believe that's about our time. I say one o'clock now. Are there any questions anyone called in? Or do we have? Well, let's see. Alyssa, was there anyone who had asked a question? No, it's no question, question. She said, well, and um, again, I'm sorry we had the wrong, we started off the wrong calendar and I will get the, the present calendar on the lib guide within about 10 minutes. But um, I did want to, <laughs> this is not happening. Okay. All right. Um, I did want to go over some of the um, events that we have going on for the rest of our week here. Tomorrow we have our Poetry Slam and open mic. 
If you go um, on our Facebook a little further down, there is a link. If you want to be involved in that, you have got to register. You can't just show up and perform. So um, you need to send in your registration by the end of tonight so that we have you on our list for tomorrow. It starts at 4.30. It, you can do poetry, song, dance, stand-up comedy, whatever you'd like to do. Um, and it's for three minutes, so you get three minutes to do it. So make sure you register tonight, and we have it tomorrow at 4.30. Then on Monday, we have another philosophy and popcorn. It was rescheduled due to Monday's holiday. You guys, y'all come and see what it's about. It's four o'clock to five o'clock. And um, we ask you a question, a philosophical question, and you get to answer it. It's very rare that you get a chance to answer something and not be interrupted by someone. So here's your opportunity, check it out. It's, it's a really interesting experience. Then next week, we have our prescribed burns. Fort Hood is their environmental science group is coming to um, go ahead and explain to us why they burn stuff up. We always see it being burned up and they'll be able to explain it then. Um, just continue to you know hit our events calendar and you can see what we have coming up. We still have a lot more to do. All righty. Okay. So, Cindy, uh, if you want to mention, you sent out the email for veterans and those in the military to write a, a statement or whatever. If you want to let oh, them know. Yes. yes, we are actually looking for people to um, share their life story, something about military history. We are going to be uh, our theme. This year's theme was environmental science. Next year's theme is going to be military history. And so we are looking for anyone who is interested in sharing their military history story. Um, just call uh, the library and let them know and they'll get your call to me. The number here is 254-526-1621. And um, just let us know. I mean, we have we have really interesting stories that were already lining up. A journalist during one of the wars. Um, we have someone who uh, is representing the 6888th Division um, during World War II. Of um, it was the only African American division um, in the Women's Auxiliary Corps. So, um, but it could be that you were in the military and you just want to talk about it. There's, you don't have to be famous about anything. Just let us know you're interested and in, we're setting up live streams and pre-records. So if you don't want the live stream where we have the wrong calendar <laughs> in a live stream, um, we can go ahead and do the, um, uh, the pre-record and we can come to you. So, yeah, thank uh, you for reminding yeah. me about that. Sure. Uh, good friend, uh, when I got that email from you, Cindy, I thought about him. He is retired, and he was in, we'll just say, special forces. And he has been to places where we didn't ever go. Okay? Okay. And, well, and, and he's yeah, got but some don't stories. tell us military secrets. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, this should be very interesting because a lot of our viewers are on military bases or retired or they're currently in the military and we want to make sure that you guys are being heard. Yeah. So and um, he, it should be really interesting. And he mm -hmm. said he was interested and he's going to send or correspond with you as far as the procedure and all like that. So looking forward to it. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right, guys. Well, thank you. And thank you for being patient with us. Um, we had a snafu. We had the wrong year. <laughs> so once we were able to get the right year put on, we were good to go. So thank you guys again. And Warren, thank you so much for all of your, your insight and your knowledge. Um, guys, y'all go to that planetarium. It is just awesome to sit there and just look at the stars and you can just 
you know, see the universe right there, right there in the dome. So not the whole universe. So right, Warren, that'd be yes. a lot of universe. Yeah. <laughs> and, right. uh, also on the lib guide, we didn't say anything. Would, would anybody, go to it. And you, the section that uh, Cindy has put in is called extreme yes. stars. And I think it should be, uh, uh, easy to understand when you look at it of what um, the information I'm giving to you uh, there. So on your own, go there and explore. Yep. Yep. There's a lot of cool stuff on that lib guide. Let me show you guys really quick where you can find it. On our library page, Go down where you see where it says research study guides. And we have literally every subject over here at CTC. But the this one is on astronomy and Mayborn Science Theater. And that's where they have all the cool stuff. Very so, good. Warren, thank you so much. And um, I'm looking forward to next time. And uh, again, give me about 10 minutes, everybody, and I'll have the right ear on the live guide. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, y'all have a great week, and um, we will see you uh, next time. Thank you.